Good morning. The Statue of Liberty, as most of us adults know, but perhaps some of the children don't know, is an enormous statue given to the United States by the country of France to celebrate our 100th anniversary. Uh, it is five stories or taller, and it sits on an island in the New York Harbor. And when it was built, they inscribed a poem on the bottom. It was written by Emma Lazarus, and it describes how the Statue of Liberty welcomes all migrants to the United States, uh, including my grandparents. Uh, and it was put to music by Irving Berlin, and that's the song that I'm going to sing today. Welcome to worship with the United Presbyterian Church of Binghamton. We're glad you're here with us, and we hope that in this time of worship, you find your hearts touched and your spirits moved by Christ's presence among us. I'm Allison Yamwama, and I will be your liturgist this morning. If you're able, please join us after worship for a time of fellowship. Coffee, tea, and lemonade are available in the front of the sanctuary, and we'll have the Zoom monitor set up there so those who are worshiping at a distance can join in. This morning we'll be hearing from David Rustin about the causes and conditions of the immigrant crisis, especially as it affects our southern borders. He will speak briefly about what he has learned in his studies in Guatemala, and will be joined via Zoom by Pedro Lucas, the director of Centro Maya Zela, Spanish school from Quetzal to Tenongo, Guatemala, as well as Pedro's wife, Catalina. We also welcome Edward Marte, who will be translating for the Lucases. Let us call ourselves to worship responsibly, using the words found in your worship guide or on your screen. Blessed are we who place our trust in God, in the maker of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything that lives within them. Our God keeps every promise and remains faithful forever. Our God gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who are starving. Our God frees the prisoners, opens the eyes of the blind, and lifts the burdens of those who are overwhelmed. Our God cherishes those who strive for what is right, 
protects the immigrants, cares for the orphans and widows, and frustrates the plans of the wicked. Our God reigns today, tomorrow, and forever. Praise God. Our song of gathering is God when human bonds are broken and is found on page four of your worship guide or on your screen. Let us pray our prayer of reproach, approach together. God beyond borders, we bless you for strange places and different dreams, for the demands and diversity of a wider world, for the distance that lets us look back and reevaluate, for new ground where the broken stems can take root, grow and blossom. We bless you for the friendship of strangers the richness of other cultures, and the painful gift of freedom. Blessed are you, God beyond borders. But if we have overlooked the exiles in our midst, heightened their exclusion by our indifference, given our permission for a climate of fear, and tolerated a culture of violence, have mercy on us. God who takes side with justice, confront our prejudice, Stretch our narrowness, sift out our laws and our lives with the penetrating insight of your spirit until generosity is our only measure. Amen.
come to the table of one whose footprints are on tundra, desert, delta, the sea of Galilee, bush and forest, and whose good news speaks in Swahili, Spanish, ASL, Bahasa Indonesia, Basque and Braille, Maya and Yuchi, Ewe and Urdu, HTML and Te Reo Maori. Come to the breaking of rice cake, puto and corn tortilla, the laying down of sima and wafer, the passing of unleavened Passover bread and naan, and the pouring of a cup of Concord grape or cherry juice, salabat juice, atole, or coconut milk. Come to a meal with a global guest list where all of God's beloved children are remembered and promised a welcome. There is no save the date, it is now. We remember the witness of Jesus to challenge the empires of the world, to stop at nothing, to declare God's love for all people. And we remember how the world responded to Jesus' ministry and teaching by killing him. And we remember God's bold challenge to the world in bringing Jesus back to life. And because of all this, we dare to remember the night when Christ was betrayed. Gathered at table with his closest followers, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this, eat this, it is my body given for you, do this and remember me. And after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks and he offered it also saying, this is the cup of a new and everlasting covenant poured out willingly and lovingly. Drink this and remember me. And so we remember and we reconnect with one another in this season. And as we invite Christ anew into our hearts, so we rededicate ourselves to proclaiming in word and deed Christ's realm. Please join me in our prayer of consecration. Holy Spirit, you blow through closed doors and into our minds and hearts. You meet us wherever we are and fill us with hope. You light the fire of transformation in our hearts. As we pause to eat and drink this morning, make us, while separate, unified in this bread, in our heart and hope, in this bread and this cup, may we meet the risen Christ. In this meal of faith and transformation, may we feel the fire and wind of the kingdom. And once we have eaten, may we be unified in the common quest to share the dreams you have given us willing to offer what we have so that those dreams and visions take shape in our world. We pray in the name of the risen Christ, who breathes hope and peace into our fear, and who encouraged us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If your elements of communion are with you, rest your hands lightly upon them. If they are here in the front of the sanctuary, open your hands to be sacramental filled with the power to change your heart and the world. We ask God's grace on us and on those who are in our prayers this morning and on God's blessing on our elements and our hands. We break the bread of life and that life is the light of the world. 
God here among us, in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. We are welcome to this gift of God, the cup of blessing. God's love is poured out with love and abundance. Today, all are invited to join in singing the meditative music during communion. Feel free to drop out of the singing while you're taking the elements and join back in when you're ready to do so. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
Please join me in our prayer after the meal. For this blessed and wonderful gift to us, for this gesture so divine and so human, the gesture of blessing the bread and breaking it, multiplying it for those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, for this offering that you renew in our midst, we bless you in turn, unexpected and welcomed guest, who transforms our bread into yours, our home into yours. We bless you in our turn, divine stranger, who, by giving yourself, transformed yourself from stranger to savior, and make us aware that we are all brothers and sisters. You make us one body, just as there is one bread. Amen. All right, it is time for the time for the young at heart. And I will meet you over at the first pew. Hello, guys. It's good to see you. Well, hello. It's nice to meet you. It's good to see everybody. I'm going to come a little bit more in the middle. I can see everybody. Yeah, you like my butterfly shirt? We have a special guest today who is preaching. David Rustin is one of our members, so you might have seen him around. David and his husband, Greg, they go to um, Tucson, Arizona, and to Sasabe, Mexico, to help people who are trying to come to America to escape danger, whether where their home countries have. So some of their countries, they don't have enough food. Some of them, it's a real dangerous place to live and they want to be safe. They want to have enough food and they want to have safety. But trying to get here, there's a big desert in the way. And so some people try to walk through the desert to get to our border to ask to have asylum. Asylum means asking to get to stay here in this country. But the, de the desert is dangerous. It's real hot and it's big. And in the winter, like you think of the desert as only being hot, but it can be really, really cold too. So it's a real dangerous place to try to walk. And so Dave and Greg have found this group of people in Arizona that go out to the desert and they leave water out there to help people when they've run out of water in the desert to have enough to drink and so maybe that they don't get hurt. Um, and today, Dave is going to be talking about his trip to Guatemala where several of these people are trying to come from and telling us about what it's like in Guatemala and why people need to leave Guatemala. And so we're going to hopefully learn a whole bunch of that today. We're also, after church, going to be starting a whole new corner over there. The place that Dave goes is called, um, oh, it just went out of my head, <laughs> Casa de la Esperanza. And that means uh, House of Hope. And so we're making a corner of hope so that um, we can help remember the people who are trying to come through the desert. And so we're going to make butterflies, because butterflies are a sign of hope. So just like they have on their, um, their shirts down there, um, we're going to be making butterflies and hanging them up all over there. So um, one of our members, Joyce, is going to tell us a little bit about that later. But I hope you all get to stay after and, and help make some butterflies for us. So our... Why, why do you think we're doing all this? Why? To help the people, absolutely. Because our Bible has all over in it, there's a whole bunch of different passages, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that says God wants us to help people who are hungry, who are thirsty, who are foreigners, who are strangers, says that all over the place. And not just our scriptures, but other people's religions too. It says it in there too. 
So it's not just Christians, but other religions also say that we should help people who are hungry, who are lost, who are lonely, who are sick, who need help. So that is what we're trying to learn today and try to remember today and maybe do a little activity about. Sound good? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Thank you, Friggy. <laughs> All right. So are you ready to have a prayer? Okay. Dear God, we thank you for all the teachings that Jesus gave us and are also in the scriptures. Help us to learn how to help others. Amen. Amen. Good job. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Verses 31 to 40. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd who separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. So like I was telling the kids, I am thrilled to welcome our elder Dave Rustin here to us today. I've got to pull up my welcome here. <laughs> um, like I said, Dave and Greg have been going to uh, Tucson to work with the Tucson Samaritans for several years now and coming back and teaching all of us um, about the important work that is going on down there and giving us ways to give back. Um, we have been able to do that with various uh, efforts to provide some resources to go down there to help the migrants. Um, but today, Dave is going to talk about his recent trip to Guatemala. He's been there on uh, three occasions and he recently accompanied a mission trip providing health services to the underserved Mayan population in the highlands of Guatemala. Being a retired social worker and having a master's degree in social sciences, David has examined some of the reasons people from Guatemala choose to risk their lives to travel for work in the United States. Very important topic today that I'm hoping to learn more about. Um, David is also going to be introducing us, uh, as Allison said, to uh, Pedro Lucas, the director of Centro Maya Zila Spanish School, as well as Pedro's wife, Catalina. And we are also very happy to have with us Edward Marte, who will be translating for us today. So, David?
Before I start my words, I want to introduce Pedro Lucas and his wife, Pe his wife Catalina. And I'm going to turn on my mic. I'm good? Thank you. Uh, before I start my words, I want to introduce Pedro Lucas and his wife Catalina. Pedro's in San Diego, Guatemala. I've been taking Spanish classes from Pedro and his daughter Johanna for several years. Uh, Catalina will be talking with us about life in Guatemala during the civil conflict in her country. Buenos dias. Antes de empezar, me gustaría introducir la. And an aspiring lawyer, all of whom I've had the opportunity to meet and call friends. I have been able to learn so much about the culture and resilience of the people of Guatemala through more than three years of weekly conversations. Una nota personal, yo con eh, Pedro y su esposa Catalina son padres de un ingeniero, doctor, eh, un dentista y también de un abogado, la, al cual ten, he tenido la oportunidad de llamarlo mis amigos. He, he aprendido bastante sobre ellos, su cultura y <coughs> mucho de Guatemala durante tres años. We will hear from Pedro and his wife Catalina after I say a few words. Nosotros vamos a escuchar de Pedro y Catalina después de yo decir unas cuantas palabras. And as you've heard uh, many times, uh, for the past two years, my husband Greg and I have been spending the winter months in Tucson, Arizona, supporting the efforts of the Tucson Samaritans and other groups with providing humanitarian aid to migrants attempting to cross the southern desert. Dor Por dos años, mi esposo y yo hemos pasado dos, uh, dos inviernos en Tucson, Arizona, ayudando a los samaritanos y otros grupos que ayudan a los inmigrantes que, tra que tratan de pasar el desierto. Seeing so many people who attempt this dangerous journey, I set out on a quest to gain a better understanding as to how did we get here meaning a world in which millions of people live their birthplace, leave their birthplace, and risk their lives for the hope of a better future for themselves and their families. Ver tantas gentes, personas que tratan de, uh, tra que tratan de cruzar la, fr eh, la frontera, eso... Oh, uh, come on back. Uh, uh, so, seeing so many people who attempt this dangerous journey, I set out on a quest to gain a better understanding as to the how did we get here, meaning a world in which millions of people leave their birthplace and risk their lives for the hope of a better future for themselves and their families. Okay, ver tantas personas que tratan de cruzar y para venir a, los, a venir a vivir una vida y no, nos preguntamos cómo llegamos aquí unas personas millones de personas que tratan que dejan su país para venir por una mejor vida y dejan su familia y todo Having traveled to Guatemala on two previous occasions without really knowing the history of the country I did not really feel like I had a very good understanding as to the why people needed to leave I had visited Quetzaltenango and Guatemala City, the two major cities of the country, and had no experience of how the rest of the country lived. Viajando por dos ocasiones a Guatemala sin saber la historia del país y sin saber lo que se siente, sin saber por qué la persona te, se, han, te, se, han toma, se toma la oportunidad de salir. Yo he visitado Guatem a Guatemala y, this time I joined up with a group from St. Michael's Episcopalian Church in Tucson, Arizona, 
led by Isla Abernathy, who has been traveling to remote Mayan villages for over 20 years. This program's mission is primarily to help provide medical services to people in the most rural parts of Guatemala. While I was accompanying the group, my primary focus was on trying to understand the conditions of the people living in the rural communities. En este tiempo yo me he uh, unido a un grupo de, de en Maisco, es Copilian, en la iglesia, en Arizona, quien a, ayudan personas en, por de, más de 20 años. De, este programa es un programa de misioneros que ayuda a lo que ofrece eh, servicios médicos a las personas en Guatemala. But first I had reading assignments. I read Bitter Fruit, the story of the American coup in Guatemala by Stephen Schlesinger and Stephen Kinzer, and learned things that I probably should have learned in high school, but didn't learn either because I wasn't paying attention or just as likely it wasn't talked about. Primero, tengo una tarea. Yo leí un libro que se llama eh, Frutas de la Historia Americana en Guatemala, que fue escrito por Steven Siller y Steven Kisser, y un, eh, que aprendí cosas que probablemente no, no aprendí en la escuela y que no sabía y nunca presté atención. For instance, I learned that in 1954, bombs were being dropped in Guatemala City at the bequest of the American CIA in an attempt to scare the democratically elected president to leave the country. All because influential people in the Eisenhower administration were stockholders in the American Fruit Company and were afraid of losing money if the Guatemalan president at the time was able to enact land reform measures and other measures to ensure workers were treated with dignity and respect. This led to the overthrow of the president and four decades of civil conflict. For example, I learned that in 1954, bombs were um, thrown in the city of Guatemala and that they were against the president so that he was out of his country. Esto influenció que la gente de la administración estuviera afectado, pues y lo aprendí durante eh, la persona estaba tenía miedo de perder su dinero, el presidente de Guatemala estaba no estaba eh, supuesto a hacer todo eso. I also read Paradise and Ashes by anthropologist Beatrice Mance, where I learned that much of the violence carried out against the people of Guatemala was being done by military commanders who were trained in the U.S. and they were using military armament supplied by the United States. More than 400 Mayan villages were destroyed, 20,000 people were driven out of their homes, and over 200,000 mostly unarmed indigenous farmers and their families were killed. Yo también, also, también aprendí que el paradiso de lo Aprendí también sobre las violencias que pasa en Guatemala y todos los, eh, todos los militares que, ha sido, que han sido entrenados por la, los Estados Unidos y fueron y todo lo que la, la, los Estados Unidos le ofreció. Más de 400 mayas fueron destruidos y 2000, más de 2000 personas. 20,000 personas fueron, le quitaron sus casas. Y muchos no fueron matados. This made me reflect on what role I played in these atrocities while working for a defense contractor for almost 20 years during this time period. I also felt a huge amount of frustration that I was not aware of these atrocities while they were occurring. And why didn't I demand our government to stop sending arms to people carrying out such atrocities? Esto me hace reflexionar que, a, en que yo he participado trabajando por más de 20 años durante el, to, to, cuando, por más de 20 años en ese periodo que estaba pasando todo eso. Eh, una mayor frustración 
de por qué en los Estados Unidos o yo no le, demand, no le exigí al gobierno que parara de mandarle tantas almas para matar a todas esas personas. Many of you know Joyce and Bill Donahue, who were part of the School of America's Watch and were very involved in ending the process of training fighters from other country at the School of Americas in Georgia. Where was I? Muchos de ustedes saben que Joyce y Bill Donahue fue una de las personas de la Escuela Americana que vio y estaba también envuelta y practicó en todo eso, um, todo eso y en Georgia. ¿Dónde estaba yo? Another reading assignment, Central America's Forgotten History, Revolution and Violence and the Roots of Migration by Aviva Chomsky. She attempts to answer the question, how did we get here? In terms of understanding how we have come to a point where thousands of migrants from Central America fleeing poverty, corruption, and violence search for refuge in the U.S. Otra, otra tarea, el, 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 Ameri Centro Ameri el Centro Ameri de América se ha olvidado de la historia de la revolución, violencia y, la, y las raíces de la inmigración que fue por Aviva Chosky, una mujer que fue, se preguntó cómo llegamos aquí con la frustración de personas que, de millones de um, inmigrantes del Centro, del Centro América que vienen por la pobreza, la corrupción, la violencia y que vienen a los Estados Unidos en busca de una mejor vida. She traces the roots of displacement and migration to the Spanish conquest and then brings us to the more immediate roots of migration as primarily a result of the U.S. interventions of the 1980s. Ella busca las raíces de los inmigrantes que hablan español, que fueron la intervención del 1980. A few other reading assignments. Border Patrol Nation by Todd Miller. Rigoberto Menchu by Rigoberto Menchu. Born in Blood and Fire by John Charles Chastain. Smuggler Nation, How Illicit Trade Made America by Peter Andres. Rounded out my education prior to traveling to Guatemala this time. Algunas otras tareas. El parol, el parol de la Nación eh, fue por uh, Tom Miller. Rigoberta Menchu, Rigoberta Menchu, que nació en las, las en, que nació y con el conflicto de la educación de, de la educación y todos los que viajaban de Guatemala en ese tiempo. Well, I could go on and show beautiful pictures of Guatemala and tell you about the work the project does in Guatemala. I believe you'll gain a better understanding of the country by us talking with my friends in Guatemala. We will have slideshows during the service and at the coffee hour after service, but now I would like to ask Catalina to join us and tell us about life in Guatemala during the 1980s. Bueno, podríamos mostrar las fotos que vamos a, vamos a, vamos a estar mostrando, pero también vamos, la vamos a estar mostrando cuando estemos tomando el café. Ahora me gustaría introducir a Catalina para que digas unas cuantas palabras. Lo hizo al revés, empezó con vos. El lunes hizo al revés, empezó con vos. Habla de espacio porque hay una gradito. Buenos días. ¿Cómo están? Yo, 
tornado es muy corta, es muy fuerte, se va a ir a y yo fui a no escucho. Un momento. ¿Viste? ¿No se escucha? ¿Tienes papel? Sí, sí. ¿No se escucha o todavía no está conectado? Sí, se escucha. Como ella traduce para ellos, no traduce para vos. No, sí. no puedo verlo. No, es que no podés verlos, solo ellos te van a ver. Entonces empieza a hablar, pero hace pausas. Ya. Hola, David. Hola. Sí. Nadie. Mendy, ¿puedes escuchar? Sí. Pero yo no sé si no podemos escucharlos a ellos, tal vez solo están traduciendo allá. Bueno, que siga hablando. Sí, solo habla, hace pausa y... Uh -huh. Nos escucha, dice en chat. Voy a contestar ¿Qué? que no. Sí, o sea, ¿ellos escuchan o no escuchan? No, no podemos escuchar a ellos. Bueno, ahora sí. ¿Ah? No. Sí. Ahora sí. ¿Ahora nos escuchan? Sí, sí, ahora muy bien. Ahora buenos días, ¿cómo están? Muy buenos días, ahora con Catalina. Buenos días. Me llamo Catalina. Yeah. Eh, soy la esposa de Pedro. She said, good morning. Good morning. My name is Catalina and I am Pedro's wife. Bueno, yo eh, también soy maestra de español y maestra de la medicina natural. Tenemos ya 28 años, o ya va a cumplir 29 años, trabajamos con la escuela. Tenemos cuatro hijos y ellos estudian en la universidad. Eh, soy originaria de Santa Eulalia, Huehuetenango. Queda en el norte del país. En los años 1960-1970, en los años también 1980, sufrimos la guerra civil en Guatemala. Hubo tantos eh, muertos, más en los pueblos de Triángulo y Chil, por Quiche, y también... Eh, todo en la parte norte de la ciudad. Eh, una de mis hermanas mayor, ella murió durante la guerra civil y también otra de mi hermana con su familia tuvieron que salir del del Ishkan, que es también parte del norte tuvieron que caminar casi una semana en las montañas yo estudié en 
eh, estudié enfermería en Quetzaltenango. Eh, cuando fui a hacer la práctica de enfermería en Neva, que es parte de Quiché, el Triángulo de Ixil, parte del norte de la ciudad. Allí la gente sufrió más el, el masacre, masacre, secuestros, torturas, eh, mucha gente murió, mucha gente gritaba en las calles, fue algo que fue duro en mi vida porque yo, yo lo viví. Realmente en estos años mucha gente se quedó sin tierras, se quedaron sin comida, eh, también hubo eh, como secuestros de niños y también había como, eh, no sé cómo decir, cuando los, cuando los soldados mataban eh, a los padres, ellos llevaban a los niños. Hubo un tráfico de niños. Mucha gente murió, muchas mujeres violadas, muchas... Dame un segundo, le estoy traduciendo, dame un segundo, por favor. Gracias. ¿Está bien? Uh -huh. um, also Muchas gracias. Ya, dígame. Sí, también más en los pueblos indígenas, entre las montañas, ya no, ya no llegaba la comida. Eh, hay do, habían dos grupos, el ejército de los pobres y también el ejército eh, militar. Eh, no sabemos a, a qué grupo culpar, porque ellos tapaban las carreteras, no dejaban pasar los camiones con la comida, ellos vacían los camiones, eh, ellos llevaban la comida y ya no llegaba la comida a, hacia las comunidades más lejanas. Mucha gente se quedó sin comida. Yo crecí más con mi hermana mayor y cuando yo visitaba a mis padres, tenía que caminar casi 10 horas para llegar a nuestro pueblo. Y cuando yo encontré a mis padres con mis otros hermanos mayores, ellos no tenían comida más que comían lo que ellos cosechaban en la tierra. A veces solamente comían papas, a veces solo comían manzanas, o a veces comían solamente aguacate, no había maíz. Uh -huh. 
o también ellos buscaban las plantas en las montañas para comer, las hierbas, las hojas verdes y también las flores de la planta de, de maíz. En las comunidades pequeñas hay una piedra especial para preparar las tortillas. Y las mamás preparan papa con diferentes flores de las plantas. Sí. Uh -huh. Está bien. ¿Viste? Ahorita. Entonces, si te necesitan más tiempo, tienes que dejar que hable. Hablamos y traducir. ¿Está bien? Hola, buenos días. David, if you want, I can do it in, in English, no problem. Bueno, ¿está bien? Bueno. Perfecto. Pues, mi nombre es Pedro Lucas. O oh, en mi idioma anjobal es Luis Lucas. Luin, Luin, pues mi familia y yo hace exactamente 30 años empez empezamos en Xela, en las tierras altas, en las montañas de Guatemala, una escuela de español y de idiomas mayas para enseñarles a los extranjeros. Y uno de los propósitos de enseñar español y la cultura es que los extranjeros aprendan sobre nuestra vida guatemalteca, nuestro pensamiento, nuestra cultura, nuestras tradiciones y, por supuesto, los muchos problemas políticos que sufrimos los guatemaltecos. Y el propósito social de nuestra escuela es que con el dinero que recibimos de las lecciones de, de nuestra escuela es compartimos el 25% de nuestros ingresos para crear un programa de ayuda con educación de universidad para las mujeres mayas de Guatemala. Sí, originalmente empezamos la escuela solamente la escuela física en Shela. Los estudiantes de cualquier país, cualquier parte del mundo que querían aprender un idioma nos contactaban y llegaban a la escuela en Shela. <coughs> 
pero gracias al desarrollo de la tecnología empezamos a incluir en el año 2009 las lecciones, las mismas lecciones de español, la cultura, los idiomas mayas, lecciones en línea, por internet, específicamente por la plataforma que se llama Skype y ocasionalmente por esta plataforma de Zoom o WhatsApp o Facebook. Sí, entonces durante los 30 años hemos tenido muchos estudiantes de tantos países en, en el mundo, solamente por mencionar algunos, Estados Unidos, Canadá, Alemania, Australia, pero en realidad de, de los, todos los continentes hemos tenido estudiantes o en la escuela en Shela o en los últimos años en Internet. Pero desafortunadamente con la crisis económica mundial en el año 2007-2008, para nosotros y en general para casi todas las escuelas de español en el mundo, tuvimos una, una baja enorme en el nivel o en el número de estudiantes. Y después con COVID prácticamente tuvimos años, en nuestro caso más de dos años, en cero estudiantes en la escuela en Shela y con pocos estudiantes en línea. Sí, entonces yo quisiera agradecerles a ustedes y particularmente a nuestro buen amigo Dave Houston por darnos la oportunidad de compartir nuestra experiencia, nuestra familia y nuestra escuela con la comunidad de ustedes. Y entonces, si ustedes en algún momento desean aprender sobre la vida de Guatemala, aprender español, aprender algo de la cultura, pues con toda confianza pueden contactarnos o comunicarse con Dave Ruston para empezar a contribuir, no solamente con su, con su vida de aprender idiomas, sino especialmente ayudamos o ayudan a ayudar personas a tener acceso a la educación, especialmente en nuestro programa Ayuda a las Mujeres, porque desafortunadamente vivimos en un país muy pobre y con mucha mentalidad machista, y por eso mismo para las mujeres indígenas, las mujeres mayas, es muy difícil tener acceso a educación de universidad. Sí, entonces la, nuestra escuela se, se llama Centro Maya Shela 
Spanish Mayan language school. Yeah. No. Oh, bueno, bueno. Sí. Y entonces, sí. Yo, yo quiero suplicar pues, su generosidad, su interés en, en las cosas sociales, en ayudar a la pobreza, a la gente pobre. Si alguien quiere aprender un idioma, quiere aprender la cultura, o simplemente si quieren contribuir a proveer educación a mujeres indígenas pobres, pueden también darnos una pequeña donación con este propósito de ayudar a las mujeres mayas de Guatemala. Stay with us for the rest of the service and join us for the coffee hour after the service. We will have the opportunity to talk with you more at that time. Yo quiero dos minutos más. Si quieren escuchar la experiencia de una de nuestras maestras, un minuto. Y si quieren escuchar la experiencia de uno de nuestros estudiantes que está en Shela, él es de Alaska, un minuto para él. Está bien. Si no, pues muchas gracias por su confianza. Perfecto. Y está bien, y un minuto si quieren escuchar la experiencia de uno de nuestros estudiantes que está aquí. Bueno, dale mi hija. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Joana. Soy estudiante de la universidad en mis últimos años para ser abogada. Sí, ahora y soy maestra de español en la escuela de mi padre desde hace seis años. O al final, ¿Perdón? Sí, y soy maestra de español en la escuela de mi padre desde hace seis años. Agradezco el tiempo que nos dan. Y agradezco a nuestro amigo David por la participación en la escuela. Y agradezco también a todos los estudiantes que están en nuestra gran familia y sean bienvenidos a Guatemala cuando visiten el país. Gracias. Todos. Sí. <laughs> Muchas gracias por todos. Yes, uh, el estudiante creo que va a hablar un minuto. Okay. Solo voy a decir. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ahorita creo que tiene el micrófono apagado. Ok, 
El micrófono está apagado. ¿El de aquí? El del... Dave, thank you so much for bringing this to us. Uh, thank you so much to, uh, oh, the camera's up there, Pedro and Catalina. Uh, thank you so much, Edward, for translating. Thank you so much uh, to all of the tech people, because this was a lot to try to coordinate. Um, I think we learned a lot, not only about Guatemala, but a little bit about what it's like for people to come here that speak a different language. It was, a, you know, a little disorienting, I know, to try to... She was so uh, animated, and I really wanted to know what she was saying, and I couldn't. And so I'm just putting myself in those places of all the people that are coming here to get a better life. Um, and can't understand what we're all trying to say because we talk really fast. Um, so uh, thank you, Dave, for all of the research, for all of the lessons, for all the things that you'll, I'm sure, still be sharing with us in the days and weeks to come. Uh, and we thank God for all of the ministries uh, that uh, Pedro and Catalina are doing down there uh, with the school. So we thank God for all of that. At this time, we are going to sing our song of response, O oh God of Mercy at Whose Call. It is on page eight of your worship guide. Um, and uh, the words will also be on your screen if you're worshiping at a distance. Join me now as we say what we believe using the text from the Immigrant Apostles' Creed by Reverend Jose Luis Casal, which is found on page nine of your worship guide. 
I believe in Almighty God, who guided the people in exile and in exodus, the God of Joseph in Egypt and Daniel in Babylon, the God of foreigners and immigrants. I believe in Jesus Christ, a displaced Galilean, who was born away from his people and his home, who fled his country with his parents when his life was in danger. When he returned to his own country, he suffered under the oppression of Pontius Pilate, the servant of a foreign power. Jesus was persecuted, beaten, tortured, and unjustly condemned to death. But on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead, not as a scorned foreigner, but to offer us citizenship in God's kingdom. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the eternal immigrant from God's kingdom among us, who speaks all languages, lives in all countries, and reunites all races. I believe that the church is the secure home for foreigners and for all believers. I believe that the communion of saints begins when we embrace all God's people in all their diversity. I believe that in the resurrection, God will unite us as one people in which all are distinct and all are alike at the same time. I believe in life eternal in which no one will be foreigner, but all will be citizens of the kingdom where God reigns forever and ever. Amen. You're invited at this time to reflect on the ways that you can support the ministry of this congregation through giving your time, your skills, and your finances. If you wish to make a monetary offering today, you can visit the web address that is printed on your screen and in the worship guide, or use the link in the YouTube video description. You can send a check in the mail, or you can leave your offering in a plate by any of the doors on your way out of the sanctuary. If you would like to offer your time or talent, look through the worship guide for ways that you can join in the ministries here at UPC or contact the church office. So now, because God has been so good to us, let us return our gifts and our offerings. Please join me in our prayer of dedication found on page 10 of your worship guide or on your screen. Loving God, we know that ministry is not a service we receive at church so much as it is a life-giving work you call us to do with others. Use our gifts, our talents, blended with the gifts and talents of others around the world to make a difference in our lives and the lives of others. Amen. At this time, we have a minute for mission from Joyce. There she is, Joyce Donahue.
this one right here. Hello, my name is Joyce Donahue. And this morning, we are going to dedicate the Corner of Hope, or in Spanish, La Escuela de Esperanza. This Corner of Hope is a place where we will remember the lives of our brothers and sisters who have lost their lives attempting to find a better life for themselves and their families crossing the southern border of the U.S and for migrants worldwide. Each of the 173 butterflies that will be hung in the corner of hope will represent the dreams of an individual migrant whose body was found in the Arizona desert in 2022. Each butterfly has an identifying number, many of which represent unidentified remains, and if they are identified someday, we can add the name. We will also display current information on two of the organizations instrumental in providing humanitarian aid to the people in the desert, Tucson Samaritans and Casa de la Esperanza. We will also have a London library containing migration-related literature for those seeking to learn more. Please consider helping to support the mission of Casa de la Esperanza by purchasing t-shirts or handbags. We will have a special collection at some point in the future to support the mission work of Dave and Greg in Arizona. Thank you, Joyce. It's time for announcements. Um, there are a few today. Uh, first, uh, Scott wanted me to let you know that the directories are now finished. Hooray! Um, they are located back there um, on the table to the right of the door. If you're going out this door, they have stickers with your name, your last name on them. So look through um, and find yours um, if for some reason in the craziness of this week, we forgot your sticker, let us know, and there's extras in the office and we can get you one. Um, Sarah would like to let people know that if you would like one of the smaller uh, origami crane garlands um, for your own uh, to take home and to remember peace um, in your household, uh, talk to Sarah and she can uh, let you uh, take one home. I unfortunately can't hear you, Sarah, so <laughs> see Sarah afterwards, um, and there's ones over there that um, she can help you out with. Amy, I hear that there is an announcement that you have about the song, about Spanish versus English. Our song of sending, oh. we will sing Spanish first and then English. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that we need to lift up verbally today? There's a ton of them in your worship guide. Uh, if you want to know anything more about that, please see um, us after the worship. And like Joyce said, we will be starting the Butterflies Project after worship as well. So please join us uh, for that. Seeing no other announcements. Um, our song of sending is Gather Us In on page 11 of your worship guide or on your screen. Shall arise at the 
Join me as we bless each other on the way. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may live deeply within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. And when we are deep in the earthy, messy thick of it, may we remember to look up at the stars and wonder. Amen. And may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Peace be with you and also with you. Please offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Sun our way, bringing light and hope to every land. 